Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Street Smile Solutions, streetsmilesolutions.com, and this is just another one of those FAQs that keeps coming up um, in my personal orthodontic consulting business, Street Smile Solutions. We probably get one mega perio patient every day, and the doctors are all confused why things aren't going as predicted or why the treatment plan maybe can't be done a certain way. So if you want to watch my other videos I have on periodontal disease and orthodontic treatment or periodontal disease and Invisalign treatment, you can just go into my YouTube channel. To get to my YouTube channel, go to your YouTube channel, put in the search bar straight smile solutions. That'll take you to my YouTube channel, which has a green banner. From there, there's a little magnifying glass in the top right, not the corner, just top right. It's super tiny. You have to look for it. If you don't know where it is, let me know and I'll show you where it is. And you can put in any keyword. That's how you search things. So I would just put in the word perio and that should pull up any perio videos that I have, which is there's a few, there's a handful. But this one is gonna tie it all together. So let's talk about that. So first of all, listen, I'm an orthodontist. So whenever I had a perio patient, um, of course, I'm looking for a perio release to be signed, okay? So that's just how it is. I, I'm not managing the perio during treatment. I'm just moving teeth. It's a little bit different if you're a general dentist and you happen to have a perio patient who you're doing Invisalign on. You might be managing the perio. You might be outsourcing the perio treatment. Of course, I'm always in support of our fellow specialists like periodontists. I have a lot of friends that are periodontists. They're great people. I'm personally undergoing perio treatment, not for perio proper, but for um, a tongue tie release. But I had to go through the whole perio exam. I've had perio surgery before for other things that were not related to disease. But anyways, um, blah, blah. So look up my other videos, but I do think that if you have a perio patient um, where you have concerns about attachment loss and the predictability of tooth movement, tooth loss, you should definitely refer to perio. I don't care if you're a general dentist and you manage the perio on your own. If the patient has complications and if you did not refer to perio, you may be liable. This may be below standard of care. And I think patients would have a ground to complain. I'm just saying. No, I'm not gonna get involved in that, but I'm just saying. Um, you're not a periodontist. Yes, you can do some perio treatment in your office. Maybe you can do lots of perio treatment, but you need to put on your periodontist shoes and say, yeah, you know, this tooth may not survive. Maybe this tooth needs grafting surgery first. Maybe, you know, we need to do a bone graft before, middle, or after. Maybe we need to do a soft tissue graft before, middle, or after. If you're not comfortable making those decisions, then you shouldn't be releasing the perio. You should refer to perio, let them do the release in writing, say this patient is, and there should be, you should have a document like a perio clearance slash cavity clearance where the third party, where the periodontist specialist will sign off. If a periodontist will not sign off for treatment, you shouldn't be doing it, you know, because most periodontists will, and they'll say, yeah, I'll sign off as long as I can manage their perio during treatment. Fine, you can have the patient during treatment. I think that's a great idea. And in fact, I'd love for you to do that. So just think about that, because um, that seems to be a bit of a stumbling block. I know y'all are in a hurry to get treated, but if your patient's tooth falls out during or shortly after treatment, your patient's not gonna be too happy. And I realize that that is kind of in the informed consent, the Invisalign informed consent and or your standard braces informed consent, which I hope you're having your patient sign. That is your responsibility to have them sign it. It's lightly in there. But if you had a patient that had a tooth like, I don't know, I'm just poking at this, but let's say this tooth or this tooth, these lower sevens, and you were trying to upright them, and you clearly got some vertical you know, defects and horizontal defects and things like that, um, you know, that tooth might fall out. <laughs> you, you may make, make the attachment loss worse, depending on the treatment, how you're moving teeth, things like that. So unless your patient is aware in writing that they may lose some teeth that they spent a lot of money to fix, you might get yourself in trouble. So anyways, that's the main thing I just want to let you know. Please, please, please talk to your periodontist. But let's talk about also different types of movements and how moving teeth in a periodontally compromised patient is different, right? So let's talk about crowding. How do we normally fix crowding? So... I mean, got a crowding patient here, we've got a spacing patient here. Two different things, right? Um, if I've got crowding, the ways I can get crowding fixed are the following. We can do expansion, and if you don't know what arch expansion is, hopefully you're not having perio situations in a kid who needs paddle expansion, so that's out. But arch expansion, which means widening the arch, moving it more buckly. You can have proclination, which means tipping the front teeth forward, okay? You can have distalization, which can't happen if you have third molars, but if they're out, you can. 
you scooting the teeth back and it depends on the bone and, and tuberosities and things like that. So obviously you'd have to look at a panel. In terms of the proclination, what I use to see if that's possible is coarse a SEF and SEF numbers. If you don't have, if you have a perio patient, a hard perio patient, you better have a SEF and you better have SEF numbers and you better have a panel. Don't try to do things with, with inadequate records. Have your records up to standard of care. Dot your I's, cross your T's, do things right like an orthodontist would do. Refer out to Perio for that release, for that clearance. Explain why you're asking for it, you know? And I do have some additional clearance forms that you can purchase at my store, um, Straight Smile Solutions website, go to store, and you'll see them in there. They're $20 a pop. If you're one of our VIP or concierge doctors, you get as many as you want for free. If you're a, matter, if you're a member of DSN, Dental Success Network, Mark Costas, we do give three pieces of paperwork for free to anyone who's a member. To, in order to prove you're a member, you need to message us on DSN Workspace. Um, but that's the only freebies I got there. So yeah, so you get the idea. We've got proclination, expansion, distalization. Another option would be IPR, which is interproximal reduction, which is kind of sawing and removing microscopic amounts of tooth structure in between each tooth. You can get up to about five millimeters per arch, assuming you don't have restorations or interproximal fillings or things like that. That, that helps out. So the combination of you know all those will help you with crowding. However, when you have perio, you might not be able to do some of these things. So what should you probably not be doing? Well, I probably wouldn't be doing, doing too much transverse expansion because that's tipping the teeth. We're not doing palatal skeletal expansion because this is not a kiddo. So we're tipping the teeth and in doing so, it might compromise the perio breakdown a little bit more. I certainly wouldn't be doing, if I had the pano and it looked like the teeth were at all flared, I certainly, you can always use a CBCT as well. Uh, I certainly wouldn't be proclining the teeth. So those are off the table for the most part. Um, in a healthy patient, those are on the table, right? So we have more options for crowding. We do have a distalization option, which is scooting teeth back. You can do a couple millimeters on top and maybe one to one and a half on the lower, depending on the ridge, but the third molars have to be out and gone. And the, you know, the bone should be healed a little bit. So there's that. And you can do the IPR. Of course, you have perio, which is definitely kind of my go-to way to fi get crowding fixed because usually along with perio, we have black triangles. That's how that is. It may not be too noticeable when the teeth are crooked, but it becomes quite noticeable when the teeth are straight. So IPR is usually a good way, but you're not going to fully get rid of all the black triangles. That's just part of perio. If you don't like it, you can have restorations later. Yes, that can get expensive. Sorry. There's also the options of doing gum fillers, um, gum drop technique, um, things like that. Again, this is all cosmetic. It usually probably won't be covered by insurance. It can get very expensive. So um, again, a periodontal compromised patient can make things much, much more compromised. So coordinate with your local periodontist, support your local periodontist, and communicate well with your patient. Everyone's always in a hurry to get straight teeth, but they don't realize the risks. I can tell you personal experience. I did have a family member who did get, I won't mention who she is, but um, she did get braces, this was before Invisalign, um, in her 50s, could have been 40s, um, and she had some periodontal issues, and she did lose some lower incisors, but she knew that, like she was not surprised. Going in, the doctor said, very likely you're gonna lose some lower incisors, very likely you're gonna need the implant. That's just how it's gonna be, you know? We're gonna straighten teeth and probably gonna lose some teeth. So she got implants, not a big deal. But she was prepared, right? And it was in writing and she knew and she knew it was gonna be an additional expense. She knew it wasn't gonna be covered by insurance. So, but I do always prefer Invisalign hands down over braces on any perio patient. I know a lot of you perio patients out there really, really want to have braces. You're like, oh, I'm not gonna be compliant. I'm not gonna wear my Invisalign. I'm sorry, but Invisalign sources are just slower and lower and they are the slowest, lowest and their trim is the healthiest out of any aligner company out there. It's just the best. I mean, I'm not at all working for Invisalign or Align Technology. I hate saying something is the best, but for Perio, it is the best. It is the only one I would do. Now, if I was a healthy, younger patient, yeah, there could be lots of options. You can do braces, you can do other aligner companies, you can do sure smile, you can do clear correct, you can do white labor. But for Perio, Invisalign, hands down. I would not do anything else. And I certainly wouldn't do clear correct because their trim line is too high, not good for Perio, and the material is too thick. I've seen crazy things happen with clear correct and perio patients. So anyways, hopefully that is helpful. Thank you.